Hello, I am going to make a video today of a experiment that I have been been working on for off and on for a couple of years and I've never had good results but now I think I can get good results. What I want to do is see if I can measure the performance of a standard linear type regulator. Uh, I want to compare several different types of linear regulators to see if I can see if one is better than the other. Over the last couple of years, I've made a couple of stabs at doing that. I made just a, you know, a quick little uh, circuit board out of, you know, some copper uh, clad circuit board material, cut out the traces and uh, put the parts on here and made a couple of attempts. I could kind of see some differences, but uh, it wasn't very repeatable. So what I did a couple of weeks ago is I made a custom circuit board that has seven, seven different types of linear regulators that I uh, routinely use in my own projects. Um, I guess I should say I routinely use six of these seven. One of them uh, was new to me. I actually got the layout wrong and so we won't be making any measurements with uh, one of them. There's a solid plane on the back. Uh, each uh, regulator is in its own little circuit and it's isolated from all of the other circuits by a jumper header at the input and the output. I'm using the exact same filter capacitors on uh, every regulator, electrolytic in parallel with the ceramic and on the output I have two different types of ceramics in parallel on the outputs. Uh, my input is here I've got outputs here and then I also have an output here that I can directly couple with this BNC connector to my audio analyzer over here. I also have a load here and I right now have this set up as a small load of about a hundred milliamp. I can take this output straight into my audio analyzer because the audio analyzer is capacitively coupled and so it's just going to measure the AC component or the noise coming out of these regulators. Some of the other tests I want to do is I'm going to take um, the my function generator that's just kind of off screen here and I'll take an AC waveform with a DC offset, pipe that down to a audio amplifier I built 30 years ago <laughs> that's DC coupled so I can get a DC output with an AC component on the top. That way I'll be able to see what type of uh, input ripple rejection I have. Another test I want to do is I'm going to take my programmable DC load and it has a transient uh, output function and then I'll be able to measure how these perform under different loads and different transient loads. And I'm probably going to come up with a couple of other tests I want to run while I'm doing this. Uh, so this might actually end up being a couple of different videos. Here is the schematic for the test circuit board. As I mentioned earlier, there are seven regulators. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The regulators are placed in that same order on the circuit board, one through seven. This is the TLV117. This is a SOT223- uh, for package. Uh, I use this part uh, quite often. The Right now I'm using a fixed voltage of 3.3 volts. Uh, all of the regulators uh, on this design are set at either 3.3 or 5 volts. This part is the LP2985. This is a low dropout regulator and I often use this when I need to power a small microcontroller small uh, analog devices. I used uh, several parts uh, like this in a headphone design I did just a couple of years ago. The uh, LM317 is next. This is uh, kind of my workhorse part and uh, it's nice because it can take a uh, fairly high voltage. You can see it can take up to 40 volts. Um, I am going to be feeding uh, this circuit board design with uh, 12 volts. Uh, key to getting good performance out of the LM317 is that you need to have this uh, capacitor 
across uh, the uh, feedback resistors here. Next part is this analog devices ADR4525 and uh, this is commonly used as a voltage reference, um, a high precision voltage reference. This is uh, you know a four or five dollar part in low quantities and uh, it can't supply a whole lot of current capable of uh, working as a uh, just a standard regulator. The next part I goofed on the design and uh, it's not functional. Um, what I'm showing here is what I think the correct design should be. We're not going to see the performance on this part and uh, I have only used this part maybe uh, once or twice. The next part is a uh, 78M05 regulator and this part is made by uh, On Semi. My last regulator is the old garden variety uh, LM7805 and the part I have on there is made by uh, NJR which I guess is now uh, this company. Let's look at the circuit board really quick. It is a two layer circuit board. The, I'm going to show the bottom layer. There's not much to see with the bottom layer as it is a uh, total fill. And I'll go back to the top layer and I'll keep that bottom layer turned off because there's really nothing to see. Big trace that uh, comes down and feeds all of the regulators independently and each uh, unit can be disabled by pulling off this 10th inch header and uh, each uh, output can be routed to the output also through a 10th uh, inch header. What I've done is I've done pretty much all the connections with uh, polygon fills so each uh, trace is uh, can support high current, it's got uh, low inductance and any uh, fill that is going down through the ground plane is tied to that ground plane with a whole bunch of vias. And we can see that with each uh, regulator I was able to basically use fills for all of the connections. Over here is my uh, load directly tied to a uh, BNC connector. Uh, these outputs here are you know Phoenix type uh, connector. We'll show what the 3D mode looks like and uh, yeah that's what it looks like. Uh, Altium is a uh, pretty uh, nice uh, layout tool. Oh uh, I guess maybe I can talk about the capacitors a little bit. As you can see uh, each regulator has a large electrolytic capacitor that is 47 microfarads and then uh, each regulator also has a ceramic uh, capacitor on the input on the uh, output, I also have two ceramic capacitors. Specifically, want to talk about this 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, some people might be concerned that I don't, you know, this 10 microfarad cap might be much less because of the DC bias. This actually is a really nice capacitor. I will show that right here. Emmett's website is really slick in that uh, you can. An interactive graph that will show you the capacitance under DC bias. I can move my little cursor around here and at 3.3 volts probably roughly in here that uh, I am going to have maybe only a call it a 3% uh, reduction of capacitance. So this is a pretty cool uh, tool that uh, Kemet provides. So you can look at this capacitance versus uh, DC bias and you can also look at impedance. Let's start with some measurements. Let me explain the setup. Uh, as you can see right now I've got the board powered on and I'm looking at the uh, top regulator which is the TLV1117 uh, I am powering with the linear uh, benchtop supply at 9 volts DC. Right now I am using a coax cable up to my uh, Keithley uh, meter and I'm just going to show the uh, voltages uh, on each regulator. 
I also have, there's an aluminum plate. That aluminum plate goes underneath this whole bench and is uh, earth grounded. This is the TLV1117. Here is the LP2985. Here is the LM317 ADR4525 78M05 7805. I've zoomed in to the display of my uh, audio precision unit. Bandwidth set for 22 hertz to 22 kilohertz right now. So we are roughly measuring uh, 64 microvolts right now with the TLV117. This is the LP2985. This is the LM317. This is the ADR4525. That's uh, quite a bit lower. Also a much more expensive part. This is the 78M05. This is the 7805. Um, 7805 uh, appears to be the worst. Let's run this test again but I now have my analyzer set for full range <laughs> for this unit, which they're basically just saying is less than 10 hertz, greater than 300 kilohertz. Right now I am on the TLV1117 and we are seeing roughly, let's call it up to 70 uh, microvolts. This is the LP2985. Let's call that 2223, LM317. Oh, very interesting. 120 microvolts, ADR 4525, 12 microvolts, 78M05 is 52 microvolts, 7805 is, call it 80-ish microvolts. So that's really interesting. Smaller bandwidth, the LM317, uh, performed quite well, but at the uh, higher bandwidth, uh, it was uh, roughly four times as worse. The TL117 was uh, similar. So I'll compile these into a spreadsheet and I'll show them. Here's the results seven regulators in this col this column right here and I've got the first results of the noise looking at with a bandwidth of 22 Hertz to 22 kilohertz and as we can see the uh, there is quite the range about a seven to one range the analog devices part is the winner however it has a very limited use case in that its current output is uh, rated pretty small and uh, if you do the math with this 50 ohm load I'm actually overdriving this part. The normal regulators the winner is this LP2985. Um, it uh, has very low noise and does not have much of an increase from uh, going from the uh, smaller bandwidth to the larger bandwidth. The surprising uh, regulator was the LM317 um, who had pretty low noise at the lower bandwidth but at the higher bandwidth uh, it had a quadrupling of the noise. I'll have to do a little bit more investigation. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to expand on this uh, spreadsheet here. I will do some uh, ripple rejection, some other noise tests, and um, we'll see what those results are. Anyways, that's about it for now. Thanks.